Welcome to week 12, uh, July 8th. Uh, titled today, What Do We Value the Most? We're actually going to look at two things today. Uh, one, what value do we put on knowing God? And the second one, let no one deceive you. Um, I did talk briefly about that a couple weeks ago about false teachers. Colossians chapter 2. So then, just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in Him, rooted and built up in Him, strengthened in the faith, as you were taught, and overflowing with thanks, thankfulness. In Philippians 3.8 it says, What is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus as my Lord. For whose sake I have lost all things, I consider them rubbish, that I may gain Christ. So what uh, is so valuable in your life? Consider the best thing, or the, the thing you value the most. Uh, maybe you have a valuable coin. Uh, some people uh, collect Morgan dollars, so they may show you an 1880 Morgan dollar. Maybe you have a watch your dad gave you, and that has a sentimental value. Uh, maybe you value your quest for a, a collection of some sort, uh, old books or baseball cards. Um, maybe you feel that uh, something sports related is the most valuable thing you do in your life. Surfing is more valuable, soccer is more valuable, baseball is more valuable than other things <coughs> in your life. Did you ever watch any of those uh, old movies, um, some that have to do with artwork, and the painting uh, that is brought forward for an auction? Uh, most people would look at it, the collectors, and think it was dull, uh, wasn't very good, but it happened to be the most valuable painting in the auction at that time to that certain collector because it was painted by his wife. How about the one where they go through the entire estate? Um, someone has passed away and they look at the cars, the buildings, the bank accounts, and they find out that the one thing that that person valued the most was a bottle of wine, say from 1889 or something. Um, funny part was it was never enjoyed, it was never opened, it was just on display. Uh, maybe you heard the story, uh, someone had a priceless uh, diamond necklace. They kept it in their safe their entire life because they were afraid to wear it. It was too valuable to be out in the public. I remember my mom always liked to have the newest gadgets or newest inventions. Um, some people might remember the seal a meal where you were able to put the bag up and it would seal it and keep the food fresh. Um, she got all excited when they uh, first came out with a trash compactor that you could have in your home. Um, the thing was terribly noisy. Everybody hated it when it was running. Uh, sometime after the warranty had run out, the trash compactor stopped working. It became a regular trash can, and it was a great place for putting the coffee pot on top of it. Um, how about a priceless treasure uh, to you that someone has but finds out it's only worth a few dollars? There's a popular television show that has people bring their priceless items to a person and they evaluate what the worth would be. Um, it could be worth hardly anything at all. It could be worth several thousand dollars. I liked when they would say that the item was sentimental um, or it meant a lot to the family, but after the guy would say, oh, well, I'll give you a couple thousand for that, they said, here you go. Well, what Paul is telling us in the scripture was that of all the world's treasures, or what we value the most, we should always hold our relationship with God as the highest thing that we have. Our relationship with God, our walk with God, our acceptance of His plan, which is eternal life with Him, when all these earthly items fade away, and they can fade away before we pass away, um, the value of having heaven waiting for us is the most valuable. Second point today is continue to live in Him. You have accepted God, but you have left Him behind. Sometimes that happens after we begin our walk with God. We tend to get off on the wrong road, so to speak. After you accept the gift of forgiveness, the gift of eternal life, don't forget Him. 
Paul says, don't listen to other religions or traditionalists. In verse 8 of today's chapter, it says, See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and the elemental spiritual forces of this world, rather than on Christ. After you accept Jesus as your Savior, it's always good to connect with a church or connect with somebody to help you on your walk. The country of England liked to set up or strike deals with many other countries in history. You can read that. Maybe it was trading goods for a future partnership in a war they were planning. Maybe they would arrange a marriage to bring countries together for the purpose of expanding their territory. But when the United States was on course for their independence, there was so much going on that it made you dizzy trying to keep up with all the groups. There was the colonists, the Continentals, uh, the New Jersey Volunteers, the Whigs, the Royalists, all with their ideas and philosophies. When someone was taken prisoner by one group and taken to another location, uh, they would say, don't kill me, I'll join you. People would listen to others and change sides, never sticking to their original beliefs. A new pastor of a church out west uh, was in his office one day, and a young lady came in and said she'd like to redo the sanctuary, or the church building. She said, you know, new pastor, uh, new flowers. So the pastor agreed. She proceeded to start her project when an older lady approached her and told her she could not do that. That the old flowers get cleaned and put back in place. That the old flowers have been there for over 18 years. The women started fighting back and forth. Uh, the pastor was very smart, he just stayed in his office. But the old lady actually slapped the young girl. The pastor noted that the church family wasn't as important to this lady as was tradition, or a bunch of flowers. And Paul warns us of traditions and false religions getting in the way of our walk with him. When Paul entered the city of Colossae, he found the church surrounded by competing religions and other cults. There was mysterious religions, uh, which were mysterious because they were new. New religions kept popping up. There was old religions based on gods and goddesses of Greece. There was sophisticated philosophical systems. Uh, there was religions based on magic, working with spirits. Uh, there was ones uh, that were just based on law and works. If you followed the rules, then you would get to go to heaven. It was like walking into a flea market of options, tables filled with all types of religions, uh, pulling you back and forth, making you confused. There were so many choices. When Christianity came to the city, people realized that belonging to these groups always made them feel like they were missing something. They found that Jesus Christ was what they were searching for. You may say that this is in the past, that we can't be dragged in the wrong direction anymore. Maybe you are mature, um, or you feel you're mature, uh, because of your age. With maturity comes wisdom, and we can't be fooled anymore. I deal with a lot of customers who come in and show us that they've won the lottery. They don't usually remember entering, but they must have. In order to get their winnings, they need to send a processing check. They usually come back a few weeks later asking for a secure way to send another check. Maybe the check is for uh, paying the taxes on the winnings. Again, they may return and say they need to send a check for exchange rate uh, costs. Uh, maybe to pay uh, somebody to uh, negotiate the lottery because it's from another country. The winnings are usually like a million dollars, so it's very enticing to keep sending checks or bank information. Um, for each person we convince that that's not true, that it's a phony or a scam, uh, another person sends their checks. I had a young girl come in. Uh, she was probably uh, 17 or 18, and she was sending a $16 check to a well-known uh, sweepstakes giveaway company. She had entered and she finally won. And I questioned the address of the place because it did not match the right state. Well, I never saw her again, but when I ran into her family, they said she never won a million dollars. Um, 
also along with being deceived, and Paul talks of this in his different letters to the church, uh, never be deceived by the devil. God changed you, God forgave you of your wrongdoings, don't let the devil drag you back and away from your walk with God. So just like the warning with people, we have this warning um, concerning the devil. God wants you to draw closer to him. The devil wants you to give up your walk and leave the highway that you're traveling on with God. The devil can remind us of our past. He can make us pursue a career. Uh, maybe make you so busy in your job that you lose your walk with God, your connection with God. Um, he can put you at odds with people, so you start planning revenge, and those plans uh, draw you away from God. All distractions. Let me put it this way. Did you ever hear a story of uh, maybe an invention that was being made? I'll just say a war plane today. And... Uh, the, the plane is on schedule, everything seems to be going fine, and then uh, somebody from a rival company, or maybe a, a spy from another country, gets involved. Um, they find one day all the wiring doesn't seem to be right. So they stop what they're doing, and they fix the wiring. Later on, uh, some engine parts fall out when they start the engine. Um, so they have to repair that, they have to stop what they're doing and they get sidetracked by repairing the engine, which they put together already. Um, I guess this might be where the wrench in the works uh, saying comes from. So it's all setbacks, it's all distractions. Uh, put them behind schedule, keeping them from their mission to finish or complete the job. The devil wants you to remember things that you've done wrong. He wants you to value material things more than your family, your friends, and especially your walk with God. When we start to question our walk with God, did he really forgive me the day I decided to follow him? He forgave me then, does he still forgive me today? When I mess up, am I not smart enough? Am I not faithful enough? I was fooled into believing something that was not true. Is God mad at me? The devil has thrown a wrench into the works or into our life. We had a pastor that once said, uh, leave your baggage at the front door, meaning that when you came to church or your meeting place, that you should leave everything at the front door, go in, be forgiven, and start fresh. Paul is showing us today that when we are one in Christ, we have a commitment to him, and that Christ is the most valuable thing we have in our life. In him we have value. And we should not surrender this great treasure to anyone by listening to false teachers or groups. Remember, a setback is just a mistake. If you're traveling on a road and you get off that road, um, say you're on a trip to get gas or to get something to eat, you get right back on the road where you got off. There's no need to go back and start your travels from the beginning. Um, that's a good thing to remember, because a lot of times we'll do something or something will happen to us, and we think, oh, I've got to restart, or is there a certain time period that I have to wait for God to forgive me? And there isn't. Find comfort in 1 John 4 today. It says, but you belong to God, and have defeated the false prophets, teachers, speakers, because the spirit who is in you is more powerful than the spirit in this world. So know what to keep the important things, know what to throw away or not to listen to, and have a great week. See you next week.